So I keep hearing about a 24 movie. Is there oh, a 20? I've, I've, I've heard the same rumor. Become a personal trainer, marry a princess. You know? <laughs> yes. I saw your salad tips. Yeah, so salad. I mean, everybody eats salad. If somebody thinks about diet, they think, oh, I gotta eat salads. Okay. So it comes down to. For all of you 24 fans who want to know whether there will be a movie, the show's executive producer is here today. He's Emmy winner Howard Gordon, who's also helped produce The X-Files and is author of the new novel Gideon's War. And then fitness models Wesley Wilson and Jonas Johansson tell you how to get in top athletic shape for extreme sports and why it's different from the way most people work out. Pleasure to have you here today, Howard. Thanks, Gregory. Appreciate it. So I keep hearing about a 24 movie. Is there oh, a what? 20? I've heard, I've, heard the, I've heard the same rumor. <laughs> so uh, it is a rumor, huh? Well, you know, it's, it's it's, uh, it's something that we, it's an ongoing conversation with Fox um, in terms of what it's going to be and when it's going to be, but it's nothing, there's no plans at this point um, to announce. Now, I had read on, on the internet, so it must be true, uh -huh. that, that there had been a script and, and that it had been worked yeah, on. Yeah. And then... You know, it's, it, 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 the, 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 uh, the latest draft of the latest uh, iteration of this was just something that uh, Fox decided not to go ahead with, but hmm. conversations are continuing. But Keith or Sutherland Keith is definitely very, very, very much. Enjoyed. You know, it's um, uh, uh, it, it really depends on on, uh, on I think on the idea and on the auspices. But Keith is into it. Uh, I'm certainly into it, and I, I think Fox is uh, interested in talking more about it. So hopefully. We'll, we'll uh, have some news so, uh, shortly on that. Well, I'll give you a little bit of a plug for it since the show went, what, for eight seasons and got all kinds of awards. Uh, as I mentioned, Emmy and Glo Golden Globe for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Keith got a few. And uh, We've got a couple of uh, Golden Globes and, uh, and uh, SAG. And yeah, he, he, he has a fair shelf. I noticed he also gave you a plug on his book, on your book, uh, True to Form of My Eight-Year Experience with Howard Gordon on 24, Gideon's War is a rip-roaring thriller. So you got a good review from him. Yes. And what was he like to work with? Um, oh, he, uh, he is uh, really d brilliant and, uh, and intense uh, and f as invested in the show from the, you know, at the end as he was from the very first, uh, you know, episode. Um, uh, he understood that character in a way. I mean, he created this character who, who, uh, in, in every every gesture, just had a level of intensity. I, if you notice, you know, even when he reached for a glass of water, there'd be a kind of breathlessness. Everything was breathless. So he was really only got uh, one day to do it all. One you know? day to do it all, and uh, and just a complete pleasure and, a, and an, an amazing professional. And uh, um, very, I miss him. Were there any challenges on the producing side? Since you know, it sounds as though you had a good rapport, but. Oh, there, were times there was stuff in the news no, no, were, when he. The, oh, that, that, well, you know, that's that's a uh, you know the thing about Kiefer is that he you know he, he is uh, and always has been and always was a, a professional. I mean, he never the, the, the production never suffered for for uh, anything, and he always uh, you know actually his level of excellence was so demanding, and he raised the bar for everybody around him uh, that uh, he really was the kind of quarterback um, on the set. I he sort of left me alone with my writers upstairs, and I left him alone on the floor. Uh, down, down in the set, and um, it was a good team. And were you going to say something else when you first started? Oh, I, was I didn't say, wanna... No, you said production. You know, just this, this simply the fact of doing a thriller on a weekly basis right. uh, was was a was a was a was a, was a challenging uh, uh, thing. And we had just the most remarkable crew. Uh, again, the, the people who stayed for the entire run and became family. So uh, it's hard to do car chases, explosions, and gunfights on a weekly basis as convincingly as I think we did. And I think we. Uh, you know, gave some movies a run for their money. And it should be good training for the movie when it does I come so. around. I think so. we have a, a lot of bang for our buck. And do you hear a lot from the fans about, you know, requesting some a follow-up or...? Uh, for the movie, well, I think, I think people miss Jack, is my sense. Hmm. I mean, in some ways, I think the book hopefully will fill a small hole in some people's, uh, uh, you know, 24 uh, uh, appetite. And indeed, um, you've kind of carried on in your own way with the project because now you have Gideon's War, which, as some observers have noted or reviewers, that it does have that kind of 24, you know, adrenaline rush mm -hmm. thing going on. Yeah. So what you want to tell us about Gideon's War, which I've started to read. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for uh, starting. Uh, Gideon's War is a story about two brothers, and uh, very much unlike Jack, uh, Gideon Davis is a peacemaker. He's a, mm. uh, a guy who has sworn himself to nonviolence and uh, and peaceful conflict solution, and 
he, he has a brother who had who, and, and, he, and he, he came by this point of view from uh, because of this violent tragedy between his parents and so the book really is about testing that idea and Gideon has a brother who is a uh, covert operative who who kind of believes in the big stick theory of foreign policy mm -hmm. and Gideon is put in a position to test his own nonviolent uh, uh, you know core belief and also reconcile himself with his estranged brother. And you do take a lot of things from the headlines as far as our current events with the pirates in Somalia and yeah, yeah. Well, terrorism. Have this, well, the thing I love about thrillers is that they really do uh, uh, have these stakes that are international. There's, uh, you know, uh, 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 so you do get to take things from whether it's the BP oil spill or uh, pirates in Somalia. You, you sort of get to rip from the headlines and use them for... Uh, it's not just the Russians anymore. It's not just the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> Although it was in uh, The Tourist, which I just saw. But, How uh, was that? <laughs> um, you know, I, I love Europe, so I loved the footage of Venice. I thought it was a love letter to Venice, and I thought Angelina Jolie was just amazing. I love the fact that, I'm going off on a tangent now, but she just played sophisticated, which I don't often think you get these days in the uh, movies. You know, more of an yeah, old-time yeah, yeah. movie star. Yeah. You know, the story itself, I mean, you know, I kind of saw where some of it was going, and no comment on the end and that. But, but just, there were a lot of things I liked about it. I know it got some harsh reviews and things, right, but right. I, but I could watch her in almost anything, though. Yeah, I think she's, you know. she's very watchable. So yes, yeah, and she just <laughs> anyway. She but she has that old time movie star yeah, kind of thing going on. Yeah. So uh, what did you think? Did you see it? I haven't seen it. I I'm, I, I want to see it because I love Venice too. Probably like Salt. I worked with the movie, father but, though on uh, Twenty Four, John Boyd. Oh, you on, did. Uh, he was in this uh, seventh season of Twenty Four. So what was he like? Oh, fantastic guy. Really, I mean, you know, you you understand why uh, uh, you know he he. Uh, uh, why he was a movie star? Why he is a movie star? I mean, just a, and, and and a real gentleman, real smart guy. I remember him from what was it? Coming home or yeah, in mid, was it uh, Midnight? No, no, no um, Runaway Train. Oh, oh, yeah, Midnight Cowboy. Sure. See? See, I've seen my movies. Yeah, I've seen your movies. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't bring her to the set at all, did he? Or she didn't hang out? No, no. no. Probably working on a movie anyway. Yeah. And, but you've got other uh, series in the works too. You're doing what, Homeland? Do Homeland. We actually sh started shooting today in North Carolina. Oh, wow. Blizzard of the century, apparently. Great. I mean, of course. Uh, and you're here, so I'm, I'm glad here. that well, you're yeah, here. I'm, I'm going to go out there in a couple days. Uh, so we started today. It's Homeland, uh, mm -hmm. and it's for Showtime. Uh, hopefully uh, for next fall, and stars Claire Danes and Mandy Patinkin and Damian Lewis. Um, and it's also a thriller. And there may be something else you're working on for NBC. Uh, NBC, a there's bit. a script that uh, I just handed in uh, late last night uh, called Legends, based on a novel. Um, so we'll see. It's a, it's still very speculative, so uh, no news yet. All right. Well, thank you very much, Howard Greg, Thank you Gordon. so much. I appreciate it. The book is Gideon's War, Fighting the Good Fight Against <laughs> Terrorism and a few other things. <laughs> and keeping you at the edge of your seat. We'll be right back. Thank you. And we are back. Joining me now are fitness trainers Wesley Wilson back once again and Jonas Johansson. Great to have you guys here Thanks, today. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it, bud. And I should say you've even uh, you've provided my wardrobe today. The exclusive Wesley Wilson Fitness hoodie. Oh, the hoodie. Only 50 printed. Yeah. So you Only 50. I told you this is going on eBay, so no. <laughs> you, can, you can sell I it. Would, you can sell I it wouldn't expensive. do that. Yeah. How much would I get for it? Million dollars. No, <laughs> at least. <laughs> okay, it's sold already. Exactly. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, but you are indeed, you are Wesley Wilson Fitness, right? I Both am Wesley these? Wilson. You are Wesley, Wesley Wilson. Wilson. So I guess Wesley Wilson Fitness pertains to me, yes. So I started the company about a year and a half ago. Hmm. And through that, uh, it's been building like crazy, which I'm really fortunate to have that. Brought Jonas on board as the lead trainer of USA. And uh, he's doing wonderful things. Of USA? Well, then what are you the lead trainer of? Oh, you're the boss. I'm, I'm the, I'm the <laughs> he's the boss, okay. I'm Wesley okay. Wilson, so. <laughs> you know, I feel like, I don't like to say, oh, I'm Wesley Wilson, the Wesley Wilson Fitness. I'm more of like the leader of the team, and I started as a fitness trainer with a corporation called In Shape City Health Clubs, and from there I realized I wanted to do my own thing, so. Oh, and I should say, by the way, you're in Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, Lisa California, there. which we start with our first location, now we have four. Four? Which is great, yeah. Really? So, where? Yeah. Where are the other ones? We have, we have one in Sweden, we have another one in Santa Barbara, too, and then wow. actually we're going to have three more up north, so the first going to be growing. So. Okay, so when he said he's, when you said he's lead trainer of the U.S., that actually does mean something because you have the European branch or the yeah, Swedish exactly. branch. Exactly. And you are Swedish. Exactly. I moved here last year, and it's, it's been a lifelong dream I just fulfilled, so I'm just happy to be here, and uh, it's been going really good. Now, I hear that there's a difference between the, the training in the U.S. and Sweden. Yeah, I mean, if you look back 10 years here, most of the celebrities, they only had personal trainers. And that's pretty much where Sweden is right now. 
pretty much only the celebrities have chainers right now. And that's what we want to change. We want to go. In fact, I think the princesses marry them, right? Yeah, she <laughs> married a, a personal trainer. <laughs> See, that's, that's actually going to be our next show, is become a personal trainer, marry a pr princess. You know? that's, uh, <laughs> and, <we're beyond. laughs> and you were in Sweden, too. Yeah. So you weren't at that gym, were you? No, I weren't. <laughs> I wish, I wish. But so personal trainers are a lot more common in the U.S. now, but in Sweden it's more... Yeah, absolutely. Um, in Sweden it's, um, it's not very common right now with having a personal trainer. And here in the States it's been more like an average thing to... I mean, that, yeah. yeah. So you guys trying to change that? Yeah, you know what, it's like, like Jonas was saying, it's, it's like the celebrities and the, uh, the rich people have the trainers. Ten years ago, that's mostly what it was here in America, but now everybody has a trainer. So the same with Sweden, it's kind of like in that like 10 years behind in the sense of training. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to portray that and get the average public out there to see what personal training can really do for them. Only in training is Sweden training. 10 years behind. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like everything else, there's so much more. He's like, what, you still do that? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I can't believe you still have checks here. I mean, that feels oh, like 20 years ago in Sweden. Oh, really? So they don't have... No, they, we don't have any checks. Is it all electronic? Yeah. On, on cell phones too, or what do they do? Yeah, I mean, I can use my cell phone to transfer like money here to there and well I've always heard that that Asia and you know Europe and Sweden is I've been wondering where all my money went <laughs> <laughs> um, but so how are you trying to change that then in Sweden what are you doing to uh, I mean basically what we're gonna try to do is to just get it out to the to the public because right now if you see at it it's not many people who try to do it either so it's kind of hard to get a personal trainer and it's very expensive so we want to bring it in for a good rate and more for the average person to to be able to train in, a, in the right way well I think it's interesting too because I just think there's a different mentality sometimes between Europe and the US as far as I think the people there especially in Sweden or Scandinavia yeah. you, know, you get a lot of tall thin people I don't think there are as many overweight people as in the US um, I mean I think it's definitely starting to, to change we're going more to the US in the way of how people look, they're starting to get bigger. Getting, getting McDonald's fat in Sweden. moved in, man. Yeah, <laughs> McDonald's moved in, and it's a disaster now. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, it's good you get more clients that way. I mean, we call it our insurance. <laughs> We're really happy that we have McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, <he's> kidding. <laughs> you should own some franchise. You could have the, the, the McDonald's on one side and the gym on the other. You know. Yeah. You know, just set it over. But you guys are also big, though, on, as I said in the intro to the show, that about um, getting in, you work with extreme athletes or getting <coughs> yeah, athletes so in shape, not even just exactly. the regular show. It all Joe. started with um, surfing. So I'm a big surfer, and I, I love surfing. I know the surfing world, and I started working with professional surfers. And so getting in shape, a professional surfer compared to like a professional basketball player, it's completely different. Hmm. It's more like a, a rotational strength, I was telling uh, Howard actually, actually we were talking about this before the segment. It's more of a, a rotational strength. So we're not going to do just sit-ups for a surfer because what that's going to do is going to bind them forward. Hmm. Instead, we want to have a roto rotational strength. Oh, so a lot so of they're not exactly, exactly. So they're not like uh, you know on a wave and they, they can't move sideways. They got to move, you know. They got to be very mobile. So and you both surf. No, I don't surf. I do. Motocross. Yeah, not as big in Sweden, huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't get that good ways. But I do a lot of motocross, and I really love that. And um, so I like to train the professional motocross riders, and we also work there a lot on core strength, and try to work with the, some different muscle groups, who makes it more efficient for right useful motocross so. and you told me that actually motocross is a lot more athletic than people realize or is more demanding yeah than people many may. people can you just think you're riding a bike or something right exactly or, yeah. everybody thinks the bikes does the work but actually it's only about, about 10 percent what the bike does and it's 90 percent on what you do on the bike mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's a lot of it's an endurance sport and uh, some of the top athletes out there are act actually motocross riders so so how do you train somebody to do that? I mean, what specifically, what kind of exercises? We do a lot, of core, a lot of core, because they need to be upright, stay upright, and be able to, to last for 30 minutes in a long race. So we do a lot of endurance training. And is it longer training than yeah, the regular? Yeah, we, <clears throat> we do mix it up. We do short uh, sprint training, because we have time qualifications, where we only go one lap as fast as possible to set a good time for the main event. Then we do, for the main event, they usually go about 30 minutes, and then we do a lot of more endurance training that goes over a longer time, so. Okay, and you used to do motocross, but not so much anymore? No, I used to do, do it a lot, and I had a great time doing it, and we 
I was fortunate I could do a lot of traveling due to it too. So, but right now I just wanted to fulfill my dream and move out, out here and do do training. So. All right, we'll pick up on that in just a second. We'll be right back. And we are back with Wesley Wilson and Jonas Johansson from Wesley Wilson Fitness as I'm advertising yes, right it. here. <laughs> so you said you're here living the dream, so you came here to be, become an actor in LA, is that it? No, nah, not really. No? Not, not really. I used, you know, I've been having the lifelong dream of moving here. Actually, it was pretty funny. I saw, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies when I was a kid and, oh. you know, I got the American dream in my head and never let go of it. So I moved here last year. And uh, I want to get more into modeling. Oh, that would no. be really fun. I you just did a photo shoot? Yeah, I did a photo shoot for an underwear company called Brass. And uh, it was a huge campaign. Brass? Yeah, Brass. It's, um, Brass underwear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a visual there. I don't know. Is it, is it cotton or what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, they got very nice underwear. It's, um, it's boxer, fitted boxers. Hmm. So, um, Brass in name only. Yeah, Brass. It's like we <laughs> are. For SS. Oh. So it's like spelled differently, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. yeah. Okay, okay. It's spelled B R for SS. And you're so. doing the acting thing? Exactly. You know, I just got an acting coach, Hunter Bodine. Hmm. He's doing some wonderful things with me, like teaching me basically, uh, we're going over, uh, talking about how to, with this as well. Um, Trying to get your body to relax before an audition. Mm. So when it's all very nerve wracking. You're like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm just, you get really nervous. Because you're facing that mean producer or casting exactly, director. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So we just went through a glee, we made it through three cuts, but oh. didn't quite make it all the way to the end. But so getting into the acting a little bit, it's more of a hobby for me. I'm focusing on business right now, which is going great. So I kind of want to, that's something I want to get into full time later on for sure. But uh, it's a lot well, of the fun. Well, business can give you a little more flexibility with that exactly, then too. Exactly, exactly. So. No, I don't want to quit my day job. <laughs> but you're also becoming a filmmaker. You're working on a yeah, documentary? Working, uh, one of my surfers, he's a big wave surfer, his name's Tark Khashoggi. I'm working on a documentary, documentary film on what pro surfers, big wave surfers, have to go through in order to get in shape to surf you know, 30 plus foot waves. So for him, he's going to be doing a pipeline contest here coming up in uh, January. So is that the event that you're holding? No. No, it's event, not. Okay. No, the event I'm holding is at the Rincon Classic, and we're, at, we're the main sponsor of it. So oh. basically, we're going to go in and do all the work. It, it'll be over by the time this airs, but it's this weekend, right, coming up. So exactly. I'm going to come up and watch it, too. There you so. go. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you have some of the top, top surfers there competing, yeah, right? Yeah, Kelly Slater's supposed to be there. Um, Dan Reynolds, which are actually the two best surfers in the world, competition-wise. They're, they're rated like that. Um, Tark will actually be there as well. Hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, coming back to the film, it's, it's more of to show like the public what a surfer, a big wave surfer has to go through. So what, what do they have to go through? How so, do you? So basically we started filming and it's, it's really intense training. So we we're actually just going through this, we made up this segment for, um, for Tark. We have, them, we have this thing, it's called a sled. And so they, we have turf in our gym. So he pushes the sled as fast as he can about 40 yards. Once he stops, I have him pull these bands like this, holding his breath because it's just mimicking the movement of them swimming up. You do this okay. inside the gym? Inside the gym. That's, that's 120 feet. That's a pretty big gym, isn't it? Yeah. You have enough open space oh, yeah. that you yeah. can... Yeah, we have 12,000 square feet at our facility, so... You're going to have to check it out when I'm yeah. up there. You're going to definitely have to... We have, we have a great location <laughs> with a big, big inside turf. I know turf. the owner. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> We're actually, we, do, we do all the training for them inside. We're not the official owner. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, so yeah. you're... So, yeah. Okay, well... But it's our main location. We have a lot of fun there. So that's what we're doing with the documentary. And I mean, it's... It's something just, like I said, to get out of the public and show them what these guys have to go through. And he, how often does he have to do that kind of thing? Uh, four times a week, we train. <laughs> oh. And then, of course, he's got to surf. So. And how often does he surf? He, I try to um, do something. Obviously, there's not waves every single day in Santa Barbara. So. In fact, they had to move the surf event back, right? Because exactly. there weren't waves. It was this. supposed to be this last weekend. Um, but they had to push it back because there's, there's no waves. So. I don't know. It, it really depends. Surfing's kind of frustrating sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what, what is your plan? Or when do you want to release this or get it out there? Or what do you um, have a timeline? We're actually with Josh Palmer. He's a big uh, surf uh, production guy. He makes a lot of surf films. He just finished one. It's called The West Siders. Hmm. And um, working with him and getting the filming and so forth done. And uh, it should be done here in the next couple of months. Okay. So excited. I'll give you a copy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you back and tell us about it. And did you start to say something? I didn't want to cut you off when you were no, talking no, no. About that. It was he's talking about our turf, our inside turf. So it's a it's a great location we have, and we got a big inside turf. How long could it be? It's 2,500 square feet, so it's yeah. about 40 yards long. Wow. So 10 yards. And you do all kinds of sports on it, or yeah, we have a lot of professional. Um, 
golfers actually come in there. Golfers, and yep. yeah. Golfers. Now, is golf a very demanding athletic sport? You know, I, I mean, with <coughs> golf, it, it's different. It's, once again, it's very rotational strength. Yeah. You know, they work a lot of golf. Work a lot of. Yeah. You, you know. core right through the body, so they can. You know, get the swing right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So Never see Tiger Woods up there. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's got other things to do. <laughs> well, apparently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I also wanted to mention, though, I was looking at your website yeah. for Wesley Wilson Fitness, and I saw your salad tips. Yeah, so salad, I mean, everybody eats salad. If somebody thinks about diet, they think, oh, i got to eat salads. Yeah. So it comes down to, when, you, when you're when you preparing a salad, you don't want to just have the greens. You want to have some meat in there as well. Okay, mm. so a lot of people throw in chicken sometimes. Chicken, fish. yeah. Chicken's yeah. good. Exactly. It's great. It's very lean. So chicken and fish are a dominating factor in completing the chain for your nutrition, okay? So for you, Gregory, if you're preparing a salad, what would you put in there? I'd put chicken in. Chicken, what else? Uh, lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't take sense. a lot. I'm not easy to please. So yeah, exactly. So I mean, you can Should I tell you the truth, what yes, I really would please. eat? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know, I want to it's a chicken. tender, crispy chicken salad from Burger King. Oh my god. They've got like a garden salad and they put this crispy chicken you know, in they, it. You know what's funny so. that you talk about this because the, um, the fast food chains are now starting to like, hey, we need to get in a little bit more healthy stuff. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So. And I mean, it's good. I mean, you can't blame them for trying to mix up with the burgers. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's just when I look at like the, the calories in the ranch dressing, though, I think it's more it's than the rest strange. of the salad. So, so yeah, for like, like dressing-wise, you want to keep it light. You, know? you can't drench it in dr ranch dressing because that's full of fat and endless carbs that you don't need and calories that you don't need. And it's, it's kind of pointless. So came to, the article is just basically out. It doesn't have to be a boring salad. You can make it good. Really good. So what it, is it basically just the meat or what else do you put in yeah, there to so, make it exciting? I mean, for me I put a lot of bell peppers. Hmm. I love bell peppers in the salad. It's Super rich in antioxidants too. It's very but good. Yeah. Don't you just, doesn't it just burn your mouth? Oh, yeah. The bell peppers, not, they're not hot. Oh, they're, they're no, not no, the no, hot peppers? Those, you know like the they're red just, ones and the yellow ones? Yeah. They're like a little bit bigger. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? The bell peppers. No, okay, the I don't know. Look, the red bell know. peppers. If you can't, look, if Burger King doesn't sell it, I don't <laughs> know what it is. So. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's funny you say that, man, because the bell peppers, yeah, kind of, pepper making it sound, they're actually kind of sweet, which is good. Actually, really? I don't eat a Burger King that often. I go to 7-Eleven and I just get, the, get stuff on the, ro the run. That's exactly. another story. That's another show, the 7-Eleven <laughs> diet. <laughs> yeah, actually, no, that's not, yeah, yeah. See, is that totally. a good idea? You know, protein bars are a good meal replacement, depending on which one you get. So for instance, if you're, um, if you're on the road, like you say, you are a lot, um, if you can't get to a meal, it's good to have something to stay out of that catabolic phase. So you want to you have something to give your body nutrients. So protein bar is good to have on the road. Well, mm -hmm. Many of the protein bars are filled with just sugar and so artificial flavors, so you should be pretty careful also. You should not only... <laughs> I won't say it sounds good already, but... Uh, <laughs> those artificial flavors, baby. It's not, it's not a protein bar. Right? <laughs> you saw the Five Bite Diet show? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. We still get comments about that. It's crazy. Not, I know it's not everybody's thing, but yeah. we'll come back and we'll have you on about that. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you very much, Wesley Appreciate Wilson and right Jonas Johansson, no relative of Scarlett. No, no what I know <laughs> about. <laughs> right Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll yeah. see you next time.